but it's not too late it's not over it's not finished but you can start again I didn't just desire an outward word and he desired because of our banner we are not Pentecostal by denomination but we are Pentecostal by experience we see here in the one evening that Peter goes from dying allegiance to Jesus to denying him publicly three times yet Peter found a place of repentance I have come this morning with a message of hope that your failure is not Peter Final. was in charge of his own failure, but Jesus took charge of restoring him. There is always a place of repentance if we choose to make it available to us. I want you to understand that before Jesus could restore him, Peter had to come to a place of repentance. When he heard the cock crow the third time, we read that Peter went out and wept bitterly. He was contrite. Understand that Jesus could never have restored him if he had not come to a place of repentance first. It is important at this time for me to mention Judas. He betrayed him. He betrayed Jesus and yet when he realized what he had done, instead of finding a place of repentance, he went out and hung himself. Guilt caused Judas to hang himself. Guilt caused him to take his own life. But conviction caused Peter to find a place of repentance. Judas's failure became final. The Lord understands that we are going to fail throughout our Christian walk. And that is why we find so many examples in the Bible of verses of Scripture. But things like if we confess our sin, that he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And let us come therefore boldly unto the throne of grace where we may be able to find help in the time of need. Consider this morning that Jacob deceived his father and yet he became the father of the 12 tribes of Israel. Moses committed murder and yet he became God's instrument of deliverance for the children of Israel. David committed adultery and murder and found a place of repentance and became a man known as a man after God's own heart. Jonah disobeyed God, but when he repented, he was instrumental in the whole city of Nineveh coming back to God. Thomas doubted, and yet he was one of Jesus' 12 disciples. If we look at these people throughout the word of God, that they failed, yet their failure was not final. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if he forgave and restored those of old who repented, then he will do the same for you and I. Amen. When the women arrived at the tomb early on resurrection morning, the angel said unto the women, he said, but go your way. Tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There you shall see him as he said unto you. It's one thing to be classed as one of a group, but to be singled out is something else. Singled out means there's something in it that the Lord wanted Peter to know. Oh, you're still there, Peter. You're still there. I'm restoring Jesus, you. Jesus, after his resurrection, appeared to Peter before he appeared to any of these other disciples. And this is recorded twice in Luke 24, 34 and in 1 Corinthians 15 and 5. Again, I believe that this was the Lord reinforcing to Peter that he was forgiven and restored. Jesus will go to extreme lengths to reinforce to you and I that he loves us and forgives us despite our failures. Amen. Our failures never need to be final. That is what the enemy of our soul wants us to believe, that once I fail, I'm finished. But God is saying, no, if you will repent, I will forgive. And beyond forgiveness, God restores. In John 21, Peter announced to the other disciples that he was going fishing. It's like, well, what do we do now? He didn't know what to do, so he went back to what he'd been used to, what he had done before the Lord had called him. And the other disciples decided to go with him fishing. They toiled all night 
and caught no fish. Jesus tells them to cast their net on the right side. And they did this and they caught 153 fish. Many times God's hand is in our fishless experiences in life because he is setting us up to show us his power and his miracle through our lives. Hallelujah. All he wants us to do is to obey him. It may not make sense. You may think I have failed and there is no victory. But when we obey the Lord, victory comes. Sometimes it takes failure for us to finally wake up and see our need for Christ. Why did Jesus ask Peter three times, do you love me? Peter denied Jesus three times before the cock crew. And the Bible says that there is death and life in the power of our tongue. And I believe it was important for Peter to publicly confess his love for Jesus three times, just he had publicly denied him three times. Peter publicly confessed Christ and never denied him again. And just a few days later on the day of Pentecost, fully restored, fully restored, he stood in the temple courts and preached a powerful message to the very men who had crucified the Lord in Acts 2. Who knows if some of those men that were there when he denied Christ were there that day when he stood publicly and preached the message that we hold so dear. Hallelujah. He was totally restored. 3,000 people were added to the church that day. I am sure that even though Peter repented, that there were times that Satan would have come against him to remind him of his failure. That is just like Satan. He is so predictable. The Bible tells us that we are not ignorant of his devices. And Peter was still human, but he moved on in his spiritual walk and became a mighty man of God. He did not allow his failure to cripple the rest of his life. He ultimately would have had to forgive himself. And many times we find ourselves in that situation that God forgives us, but still we cannot forgive ourselves. And that is the enemy that is telling you and reminding you that you cannot forgive yourself. And it comes before you continually of what you've done wrong, of how you failed. But know this morning that God is wanting to restore you. Rejoice, not against me, O oh, mine enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. Understand this morning that failure shall come, but it is not final. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. I have nothing to fear when I fail because God will never reject me or turn me away. God has a purpose and a plan in everything that we go through. God orchestrates everything in our lives to fulfill his purpose. Your failure is not final. And this morning we need to push back the lid of failure that has kept us in the grave and ring that bell and come out of there and say, Satan, I have life. I still.